Yeah, it's sitting up there. And, um, so, yeah, so uh, you probably want to get so you're, you're, we can see your face anyway. So you're Jason. Yes. So um, uh, I haven't told you the question. You know it's going to be a religious question. Right. But um, so the question is, what do you think happens after we die? And how did you get to wherever you're at with that? If you don't think there's anything, okay. you know, like kind of what's... Where did you come from with that belief, and where are you at now? Okay. Um, well, I was raised Catholic, um, so I grew up in the church. I went to a Catholic school from kindergarten through eighth grade. Mm -hmm. um, so I went to religious classes. I went to mass twice a week. Um, so that's kind of where I was up until I got a little older, like mm -hmm. on seventeen or eighteen. And I still uh, have faith. I still believe that there's, <laughs> excuse me, something. Um, just not the way that I was brought up, if that makes not sense. Not as set in stone as yeah. what you were led to yeah. believe? Yeah, yeah. Um, I believe a lot of the core values. Um, I believe that there's an afterlife, that you know, there's a God, uh, and things like that, um, that I did get from growing up Catholic. Yeah. But, like I said, not everything is set in stone the way that I, that I thought it was. I, th I don't attend church weekly anymore. Um, not necessarily by choice, just because of time and yeah. know, being an adult. Would you, would you, is there any events that led to not being so committed to the church or? Um, some of the, I don't agree with some of the, some of the decisions, some of the, um, I don't know how to say this without telling my life story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, just basically some decisions that I made in my life didn't necessarily line up with the way that I was raised in the church and mm -hmm. that kind of made me stray a bit from yeah that if that makes sense just like yeah. differences and you went you probably went to catechism and yeah. were confirmed and all yeah, that I sort of thing yes. you feel like you have a pretty good understanding of uh, the teachings of the Catholic Church uh, for the most part like I said I'm not super familiar anymore uh, it's not something that I practice frequently mm -hmm. um, so I would probably be a little out of touch. Yeah, yeah. Um, but for the most part, I have a solid yeah. understanding. Yeah. And is would you say your understanding of God is the same? Like, um, I would think, I would say so. Yes. You know, like for example, so getting back to that question about what happens after we die, that there's a heaven and a hell and a judgment day. You know. Right. Um, do you think that that's changed at all, or? Um, not necessarily. I mm -hmm. I believe that. Um, the God that I believe in is uh, less, way less judgmental than the way that he's portrayed sometimes. Uh -huh. uh, he or she. You know, yeah, they, yeah. Um, and, but um, I do believe there's a heaven and hell. I don't, I don't believe that there is... Um, there are certain things that I think that you know, are punishable by... No. Yes. Um, <laughs> it's not, it's not and, a fun thing to yeah, say. Yeah, you know, for even. lack of a better term. There, there yeah. are some things that I feel definitely um, that if you were to commit one of those sins in, in a way. What do you think it would be? Um, I think like senseless murder. Yeah. Um, not that murder is ever really justified. but. Um, well, some, life can get complicated. That, that's what I mean. <laughs> that's the, it, things get messy. And, yeah. and things are, I don't believe that things are as black and white. As, yeah. as they have been portrayed, yeah. I guess is a good way yeah. to say it. So, I guess what I'm hearing you say is the really, really bad people would go to hell, right? <laughs> I suppose, yes. Yeah, and and you're one of the good people, I'm taking it. I, yeah, I'd like to think yeah. so. How can you be sure? You know, like if, if there's a if there's a eternal life waiting for us, and that eternal, you know, I guess to say existence is with God, in a good relationship with God or is with being punished, right. you know, we would want to make sure we get it right. 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 Oh, 100%. <laughs> uh, I just, I don't know, I try to be, I guess, a good person. I know it sounds really cliche, uh -huh. um, but I try to, you know, be, be kind to people, uh, give back, um, just not be an asshole. A jerk. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My word for it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, but yeah. No problem. Yeah, so I'm not Catholic, but I'm Christian, so okay. you know, read the Bible and that sort of thing. So, so you're, so so I'm pretty sure you would say if you're going with the the basic Catholic idea that God is the one who judges us, right? right. Um, and so then the standard would be just being nice, that kind of thing. 
I'm, I mean, in the like, do you think we need to go out of our way to do extra things, or do you think? I don't think that we we necessarily have to. Um, I guess it's a way of saying like brownie points. Like obviously, You're right. if you if you go above and beyond, those are things that are going to be recognized, hopefully. Yeah. Um, but I don't think it's a necessity. I think it's just the basics of uh, being a kind human and, and the golden rule: treating others the way you want to be treated. I think is just the basic. Yeah. And this idea that God is not that judgmental, it's its like he would be a little judgmental about those people that are really bad. Right? right. I think that, I mean, if it, you have to look at the, big, the bigger picture of things in a way. Um, yeah. If I, you know, told a lie, which is considered a sin, if I told a lie or I murdered someone, yeah. You know, I don't think that those are on the same level. Yeah. And those should be judged the same. I'm not saying that he doesn't make any judgments at all because obviously it's not just one big party where everyone right. <laughs> everyone's yeah. there, but there has to be some type of guideline, I guess. Yeah. In my in my eyes, obviously everyone yeah. has to be Now, let me ask you this. Um, so I'm pretty sure you said God is loving, right? Right. Totally you know, God is love. You know. Do you think so, but then God is also judgmental, or or He has to judge some people. So to say judgmental, I guess, is, yeah, that is what you're sound. getting away from. Yeah. But but He does make judgments. Right. So He has to be kind of judgmental. I think is, He makes, does, Where's the love in that? I guess is what I want. I think the way that I, I see it is He makes the decisions for the for the greater good. Okay. Um, I see. So I feel that there's way more good in the world than bad. There is a lot of bad. Yeah. Uh, but I like to believe that there's way more good. So you have to think of, like, let's picture uh, this grocery store is happening. So everyone in here. Now, if there is some crazy murder lunatic, we don't necessarily want him in here with all everyone right. else who has lived, you know, a good, healthy, sustainable, contributed life. Yeah. Um, so to make that kind of decision, that's I a, don't know. That's a, it's, it's tricky. That's a judgmental. It's like... Yeah. Someone better, like if someone comes in here with a gun, it's for the greater good to take that to get, person exactly. out. Exactly. <laughs> that's kind of the way you have. That's. I, that's don't know. A, I guess that's the best way I can explain. It. Yeah. Now, um, I'm thinking. Okay, so, so you, you're aware of like the Garden of Eden and you know that whole thing. Whether it's a literal, you know, some people say it's mytho mytholo mythological, others literal. But regardless, it's kind of like a, a huge point in the Bible, right. right? So this idea that Adam and Eve were judged for eating an apple, mm -hmm. what do you think made that so bad? Like, what was what was wrong with that? I think it was more of a test, um, because they were told not to. Yeah. They yeah. were blatantly told not to, and they did it anyways. Yeah. Um, that's kind of how I've looked at it. Since I've gotten older, obviously when I was younger, I was like, dang, that's, yeah. that's You're bad. not a parent, you, are you? No. Okay. When you get to be a parent, then it'll really I'm sure sense. things will change, yeah. <laughs> um, but the way I look it's at like, it now is just like, kind yeah, of... Yeah, I'm trying to teach my children, you know, to to listen to me. Right. Yeah. And to be able to um, resist the temptation. Yeah. Um, even though at the time it seemed harmless, um, there's always... Yeah. Um, yeah, and the reason I bring that up is because it says that they were given the knowledge of good and evil mm -hmm. after that. It's like their, immediately their eyes were opened and they knew good from evil. And so that, in the Bible, that would be the beginning of human con you know, a, a right. conscience or a sense of right and wrong. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and, and, and I love what you said, they knew it, you know, like they were told, don't yeah. do this, right. and they did it anyway. And so it's not all about eating this apple or fruit, whatever kind of fruit it was, it, it was, are you going to obey God? And so, getting back to, you know, you were saying a lie is, 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 is not as bad as murder, right? In one sense, you're right, you know, like, we yeah. shouldn't murder people, but in another sense, either way, you're disobeying God, because right. we have a conscience and we know right from wrong, you know? Right. And that's where I think it kind of... Yeah, that's why it gets tricky, and, it, and I, I think that everything at that point is, is up to the individual. Yeah. I think that everyone it kind of looks at it differently when it comes down to the nitty gritty of things. Yeah. One thing I've noticed is, is almost I, I've not ever met anyone that doesn't like 
So I, I really believe in this idea that we have a conscience, and, you know, that number one, the Bible teaches it, but then as I ask people, I'm pretty sure you would say you'd have a sense of right and wrong, right. you know? Yeah. And, and nobody can escape this idea that we have a conscience, you know, we, we might disagree, you know, just based on maybe the way we were raised and things like that, but we all have this sense that there's, there's a right and wrong that we can't change, you know? Like, even if I suddenly start to say it's okay to molest children or whatever, right. it's not going to make it right, okay. you know? And uh, so it's kind of like we have this referee in our brain, and we might argue with the ref, you know, right. at times, like like people do in a soccer game. Right, right. But we're trying to convince, you know, him that in my situation, it's okay to do this. I'm an exception to the rule, but st the rule is still there. Yeah. You know. And uh, and so, you know, to me, that's a, a good way to understand um, how we can have a relationship with God is is um, to understand that we've broken the rules regardless of how we've done it. Somehow we've taken the law into our own hands and we've said, I don't care about the rule, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this anyway. I'm gonna tell this lie or I'm going to take this that doesn't belong to me or, or I'm gonna use God's name disrespectfully. You know, Ten Commandments, right. that kind of thing. Right. So if it came down, like if you died today and, and you and you find yourself before God and you're, you know, it's like Judgment Day, which is, the Bible's real clear about that, right. would you be guilty or innocent? I don't know. Have you broken any of those? I mean, in my life, yes. Yeah. Like, do you think you could do enough good to erase the fact that you... Because you seem like a nice guy. Yeah. And I appreciate that you're even talking to me, right? But we should be nice. Right. You know, like, like no, it sounds God's, crazy, God's yeah. given us uh -huh. all the ability we have in our health and time and money. We should use it to help other people, right? Right. It doesn't make us good. We're just being human right. the way we're created to be, you know? So can we take that and somehow erase the fact that at times we decide not to, you know? Yeah. Like, can we undo the bad we've done by doing good? I don't think you necessarily undo it or erase it. I think it just becomes like a balance, like kind of which outweighs. Like, yes, I have, you know, done some of those things, but kind of going back to, I don't want to say it's not that bad, because I agree with you, like, it's yeah. bad, what's wrong is yeah. wrong. But on a larger scale, those things that I've done compared to the way that I live my life day to day and the faith that I have and the belief and, and the way that, like I said, the way I carry on my life day to day, I think outweighs yeah. the bad, quote unquote, bad things. That I have yeah. In my life. Hey, I want to respect your time, but yeah. I, I want to real quickly like give you a, like a little analogy that'll kind of set things in perspective. Let's say you're in a human courtroom because Judgment Day is like a courtroom. Right. To God's a judge in a human courtroom. A judge, the judge's job is to make sure justice is served. In other words, if there's a crime, there must be a fine or a punishment of some sort, depending on what the law calls for, right? So a good judge is going to make sure that justice is served. So let's say you're standing before a good judge, not, not one that's taking bribes or anything. Right. And you're guilty of some heinous crime, and the family is there of the person, like, let's say you killed someone, the family is there. And, the, and you know you're guilty, the judge knows you're guilty. You say to the judge, well, judge, I know I killed that person, but you know what, I, I have been a really good person since then. And I've, you know, like I've held the door open for little old ladies, and I've, you know, like uh, picked up garbage, and you know, I'll even do it for you, judge, you know? Do you think that would fly in court? So the judge's job is to make sure there's a punishment for that that crime and he would say I'm glad Jason that you're a great guy you've done all these good things but my job is to make sure justice is served right so now if let's say that you say well judge uh, I'm really really sorry for what I did and I'll make up for it I'll, I'll mow your lawn I'll, I'll, I'll pick up all the garbage by your house I'll wash your car you know what do you think the judge would say if he's a good judge he would still say no because that's like taking a bribe. Right, yeah. So even if we aren't paying him off, we're trying to pay him off with our good deeds. Uh -huh. And so that kind of, that's that's kind of where the, what the Bible talks about 
when we try to pay God off yeah. with our good deeds, the, a, a good judge would would not only not accept that, he would be offended by it. Right. And that's what, you know, because he'd be offended that, that we would even think that he would yeah. uh, sacrifice justice for this bribe of, you know, good deeds. Right. And that's, and the Bible says, you know, like, uh, um, uh, your sacrifices like they're like they're like filthy rags to me. They're 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 like garbage to me. Right. You know, I'm he, he's offended by us thinking we can you know that whole balance scale that we can somehow take the good things that we ought to do anyway and pay for the bad things that we shouldn't have done. You know? Yeah. So for me, now I'm a church guy, right? I try to be a good guy, but I know that I'm guilty before God. You know, like I've lied, I've stolen, and I've nothing in my life can take that away. It's like justice must be served, there must be a punishment for my crimes, you know. I've broken every one of the Ten Commandments in some way. I hate to admit it, but I have, you know. Um, it says you shall not murder, but then Jesus said, if you have anger in your heart towards your brother and you call him a fool, you're in danger of the fire of hell. So he was saying it's not just like, have you killed someone with your hands, but have you hurt them with your words, right. you know, or even um, adultery, you know, it's, it says that's wrong, sex outside of marriage, but you shouldn't even look with lust. You probably heard yeah. that verse, Jesus said, yeah, you're committing adultery in your heart. Your heart yeah. So like, on down the line, I am guilty as charged, you know, right. and, and, and the main thing that I want standing before God is, I know I'm guilty, I can't, I can't use my good deeds to pay for that. It's not. It's not like God's just gonna like overlook it because He's a good judge. He's the perfect judge. He's you know. It's got to be dealt with. So what I need is is like forgiveness. You know, I need God to say, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to treat your sins like they like they don't didn't even happen. You know, and it's like how can God who loves people but He also loves justice just look the other way like. I know he wouldn't just look the other way for a child molester. Who am I to say, you know, God, please look the other way for me, you know? So this is where Jesus comes in. Now, you grew up hearing about Jesus. Right. What's your what's your idea about, like, why he came or what he was, what his purpose was? To be honest, I, I couldn't give you an answer on that. No? That's one thing that... Uh, I mean, this is like the middle of the... Catholic Mass, you've got Jesus on the cross, like, Christianity well, is I mean, about like some Christ. Of, some of this, <laughs> some things just don't don't add up and don't align 100%. Yeah. Um, now, I grew up Lutheran, okay. and which is a lot like Catholic. It's, it's, it's a church that's been around for many, many generations to the point where they've got all these traditions and things that kind of, like, obscures the central message. Um, so it's easy to kind of get lost in all of that. So... I call it Catholic light, you know. Okay. So when I was, I don't know how old you are. How old are you? 26. Okay, well, when I was in my late teens anyway, I was really confused about Jesus because I, I had gone to confirmation, I had gone to the classes and everything, and I, I thought, okay, there's all these religious people in the Bible, and there's Joseph and Moses and Daniel and, you know, Jesus and Paul and Peter and all these people. And I didn't know that Jesus was like the central person of the Bible. It's like, I, I'm pretty sure they taught me this, that, that he was, but I just like missed it. And yeah. it sounds like that's what you've done. You've just kind of like yeah. missed it, you know? Yeah. So I, I feel for you, <laughs> you know? Like I can put myself in your place. So, so Jesus is the, um, the center of Christianity because he's the one that deals with that problem of sin in our lives. Like, like it's kind of like, okay, so you know that they say Jesus died for your sins. You've heard that, right? And that Jesus was part of God, like God in the flesh. So it's, it's, it's kind of like this. It's like God is in, in the role of the judge. He's, he's judging us with, um, with justice. And he's, he's saying, you know, the, the punishment for your sin is death and separation from me. It's, it's hell is what it is. It's not heaven, you know. Right. 
Um, and so I must, there must be a punishment because I love people, but I love justice too. There must be a punishment for, and, and, and part of it is that uh, deterrent idea, of, you know, like if you just let sin run rampant, then right. yeah, it will hurt the human race. And then part of it is just, we're dishonoring God when we sin. We're just basically saying, I'm not going to treat you like God. I'm going right. to treat you like I'm God, you right. know, and I'm going to go my own way and do my own thing. Yeah. And so, so God is in one role, he's the judge, but then he takes another role and it's kind of like the judge gets up and takes off his robe and he stands among the people and he says, now as a, as a regular person, I'm going to volunteer to take Jason's punishment for him or Jeff's for him, yeah. you know? So it's like God is in different roles. He's, he's the one who, who um, demands justice but then he's also the one who justifies us and, uh, and, and takes the punishment we deserve. And so for us, it's like, it's like, do I want to really take the punishment I deserve when Jesus already did that on the cross 2,000 years ago? And so I, I was fortunate to have people explain these things to me. Yeah. And I turned my life over to Christ and said, you know what, you died for me, how can I give my life for you, you know, how, um, and so it's not a matter of, I didn't deserve it, you know, like, he already died for us 2,000 years ago, we don't deserve it, but it's there, it's like a gift for us to receive, and then our response might be good deeds, you know, so like, we can go through life with a response of, of good deeds. But the good deeds isn't what saves us. That would be like saying, "I got to pay for my sins with my good deeds." Like get those brownie points, like right. you're talking about. Right. But but in reality, no. Our, uh, we we have the privilege of thanking God by you know like uh, living out the life that He wants us to live out uh, in the way He wants us to. You know by our response. Right. So I I would just say you know I don't know if you've looked into other religions at all or not, not really no. I think the thing that makes Christianity unique is it's the one religion where we're not trying we're not striving to save ourselves and um, you know we're not we're not like trying to build up brownie points to earn heaven or earn a better afterlife it's like Jesus already did that all we need to do is receive that and, and turn from our sins and put our faith in Christ right. you know um, so I would encourage you to reconsider yeah. Christianity. I don't know, you know, like, I'm not Catholic, so, you know, I've met a lot of very faithful people within the Catholic Church, but at the same time, it can be distracting away yeah. from, you know, if you think about, like, all the, the traditions in the Church, those have developed since the Bible. Right. And so a lot of Protestant, so I'm Protestant, you know, it's, uh, you know what that is? Mm -hmm. it's like had some history yeah, you know, about yeah. Martin Luther and all that. Yeah. So, so that was kind of like a, a way of saying, let's get back to the original, to the Bible, and see what the Bible says and read the Bible for ourselves. Right. That came at a time when people could actually do that because they had a printing press, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but to say, you know, let's, let's get back to the original teachings of Christianity and, and uh, we may keep some traditions or not, but we're going to judge them by whether they're biblical or not, you know. So, so uh, do you have a Bible? Uh, I do somewhere. Um, Can I encourage you to read it, <laughs> uh, <laughs> or yeah. give it another look? Because yeah, if you know, if you read it a little bit when you were younger, if you read it with, you know, as, as an adult with a different viewpoint, I think it'll speak to you in different ways that you, maybe you hadn't considered before. So, thank you for. Yeah, no, not a problem. I don't know if that. Do you have any? questions like what is I mean not really just other than like what are you what are you trying to get out of this what is your your project um, well it's called the Great Commission so it's as a Christian we are called by Christ to share the gospel right and I don't know if you've ever seen someone like yelling at people on a street corner um, that's not me I don't know about them but that's not me and and uh, and I want to show people in church. So the reason I'm recording it is to show people in church that we can have these kind of conversations 
um, hopefully I've been sensitive to where you're yeah. at and you know um, and I'm trying to explain things in a way that are it's not using you know like all sorts of theological right, right. arguments but it's kind of like like in ways that are easier to understand uh-huh. you know yeah and I'm very grateful that people did it for me and so I want to pass that along you know That's cool. yeah so you live right. nearby uh, yeah I live uh, off 31st let me give you my information. Also, this is uh, what I do with these videos is I um, I usually let them inspire me to write something. So I have a blog. Uh, and this is, that's where the blog. Okay. So like in a few days after I've thought about it and I load it up, you know, it'll be on there. Okay. And then this is my number. I would love to, love to talk further. And if you have any questions or if I could buy you coffee or something, okay. you know, that's... Oh. And that's where I go to church, real, real close to here. So I actually I I saw this church the other day. Um, that's so crazy. Um, I was getting gas right there. Yeah, the it's like kitty corner and I, from. And I had just like seen it. I was like, I've never yeah. seen a church before. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, we have a, a Mandarin service, and then I mean English first, and then Mandarin. So okay. Sometimes people look at the sign and think we're just a you know right. Chinese Mandarin service, but it's English too. It started out as English. Okay. So, cool. I'd love to have you visit. Yeah, thanks a lot. So, all right. All right. Thanks for your time.